Hello everyone, I am Anish Bhattacharya from Encryption Consulting and in this video I will be showing you how you can integrate Microsoft IIS with Thales Teapots. Thales Teapot gives users the ability to store keys without actually owning the HSM. This brings the advantages of a cloud for the HSM. Teapots are managed services where organizations can get the security at a fraction of a cost. Depots are also scalable, highly available and fully managed. Without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we will be using Windows Server 2019 to show you where the IIS will be installed. I already have a infrastructure where I have an issuing CA which I will be using to issue the certificate. If you do not have an issuing CA, you can use any trusted CA to issue the certificate. But it is highly recommended that you use your infrastructure, your issuing CA to issue the certificate, then it will be trusted by your organization. So I'll be using a demo box which is connected to my PKI for this demo. But firstly, we will be using the Depot to create a service. If you want to use Depot, you can just search Thales Depot and this will let you experience a free trial where you can know if Depot is perfect for you or not. For 99% of the use case, it should be good for you. So you can sign up for a free trial over here. After you log in, you will see a, a web page like this. You can go to your service and then add a new service. We will be using Luna Cloud HSM for this. So I will just click on try service and then give a service name. So IIS demo and just click on next and finish. This will create a service for me. But to be able to use the HSM, we also need service clients. Now, we will be creating service clients after the service created. And one service client can be hooked with one machine. So if you have multiple machines that you want this HSM to be integrated with, you need to create multiple service clients. So I will just create a service client over here. Give this client name as demo and create a service client. After this is created, I will have to just transfer the service client to my demo box. Okay, so download client. I will just download this up and there we go. Then I need to transfer this into my demo machine. Let it get downloaded. Okay. Now just copy this up. Go to my demo box. Go to my C drive, create a folder called Luna and just paste the service demo service client over here. Then extract these files in this folder only and then also extract the CVC client. After you have all of them extracted, it should look something like this. Now we move on to the next step that is configuring the service client. To configure the Luna CEM, we'll open a PowerShell and navigate to the folder where you installed Luna. Then run the command set env.command to 
initiate our environment to talk to the Luna CM. Then we'll run Luna CM. Now Luna CM will return something like this. Notice that here it mentions slot ID 3. So we will be using this slot to configure our Luna CM and partitions. So to use the slot, just say slot set dash slot 3. So this will initialize the active slot that is a slot 3 that we will be using. There we go. Now we will be initializing our partition. So for that we will say partition init dash label partition one. So this is our partition name partition one. You can name something else if you want. Now I will say proceed. And now it is asking me to create a password for the partition security officer. This is created, this role security officer is created whenever a partition is created. So I will give in a password. Domain name. done. So we have created our partition officer as well as the partition that is partition one. Now we need to create a few more roles. So for that we need to first log in into our security officer role that we just created. So we can just say role login dash name partition security officer. Provide the password that you just provided over here. Now we will be creating another role called Crypto Officer. So for that we will say role init dash name crypto officer so this is the password for crypto officer cool now we will log out from our role as security officer and then log in as crypto officer Now after logging in, we need to change the password for crypto officer. If you don't do that, you can't create keys or certificates and so on. So it is really an important step to do this. So change password dash name crypto officer. And finally, we will create another role that is crypto user. Now, after all of this, our HSM is finally configured and it can create keys and certificates. Now to be able to use our HSM with Windows, we need to do a few more changes. First is you need to copy this safenet key ksp.dll file from here to your Windows system32. For me, it provides a dialog box when I try to paste it. 
because it already exists. Now we'll go back to our Luna folder inside KSP and run this ksp.config. Now since I'm an administrator, it runs as an administrator. If you're not, you can specify it to run as administrator. Go inside register or view security libraries, browse to your Luna folder and select crypto key.dll file, open and then register. Then we'll go going to register HSM slots and register two slots in your HSM. Now for the first one, you need to make sure this is selected as administrator and it shows the correct domain that you are using on this machine. Then provide the crypto officer password and then just click on register slot. After this, go back and select system and on domain choose entity authority and then register slot again. Now this concludes the configuring of HSM. Next we need to install our IISS server. So we can go to our server manager, click on manage, add rules and features, next, next, choose this server and choose web server IIS, add features, next, and simply install it. This will take a while. Now we can close this up and move on to the next step that is creating a certificate for the IIS server. So for this we'll open up a notepad. So for this you can use our template provided on the description box and you just need to make a few changes. So this will be US for me. Common name you can provide it as IIS certificate company name will be EC object will be dev Dallas and Texas you can change the hashing algorithm key algorithm key length and so on but make sure the provider name is SafeNet Key Storage Provider or the KSP that we configured previously. You can store this as request.inf file on C drive. Then this will be stored as request.inf over here. Next, we'll use PowerShell and go to this location. Here we can see the request.inf file that we just created. So to create a CSR from this, we will be using cert req dash new request.inf and we will be generating the request into request dot req so our CSR is created if you want to check it out you can use cert util request dot req and this will provide you the details of the CSR that has been created it contains all the subject elements that we have provided along with which algorithms to use the key length 
key algorithm and so on. Now before we submit this request.req file, you need to go to your issuing CA. For me this is CA02. And make sure your web server cert certificate template is there. If it is not there, then you need to go to your certificate templates in your cert SRV. Go to new certificate template to issue and from there choose web server. If web server is not selected, your certificate will not be issued. So we'll go back to our demo machine and be submitting our request file. So to submit your request file, you need to open up a CMD, go to that C drive folder where your cert, uh, request .req is present and then run the command cert req dash attribute certificate template web server so the web server template will be used then submit request.req choose CA02 or your issuing CA so after your request went through it will ask you where to save the certificate so we will again choose C and for the name we can give IIS-cert dot CER this is the certificate that we got back from the issuing CA we can go to certification path check everything is okay details and general cool now to be able to use the certificate we need to import the certificate into our machine so we will just use cert req dash accept then iis cert dot cer this certificate will then be installed in our system to be used. Cool, our certificate is now installed. Now we will be using IIS to bind this certificate with our HTTPS. So we can just open our IIS manager, go to our website, which is this default website that we are using and then just go to bindings we can add our binding we can leave this to unassigned choose HTTPS from here choose the IIS certificate and then click OK awesome now our binding has been done we can close this up open the browser wish 443 or you can just click over here and this will see not secure and so on but if we check out our certificate it is the exact certificate that we obtained this is the certificate that you got from your Thales Luna now of course this certificate is not currently in recognized by your browser but your browser is using this certificate to establish HTTPS connection and it is using encryption for data in transit. So that should be it. Thank you everyone. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us at Inscription Consulting or you can leave a comment down below and we will be answering to you over there. Thank you all and have a great day ahead.